The German Chancellor wants Manfred Weber because he's of the same political family as her. And Angela Merkel is basically saying that the Spitzen candidate system, this is this process where the largest political group within the European Parliament essentially gets the presidency of the European Commission, should be upheld. The French President Emmanuel Macron, he says that the system doesn't work because Essentially, it means that Manfred Weber, a man who's never held high office, never held executive office in Germany, would be in charge of the EU's policy machine, the most important institution as far as building policy in the European Union. So that's their fundamental difference. And at the moment, it looks like it's set to continue. Take a listen to what Emmanuel Macron and Angela Merkel had to say after yesterday's summit. The key for me is that the people in the most sensitive positions believe in our project and for them to be the most charismatic, creative and competent. We've decided there's no automatic pass for the Spitzen candidate. It's clear that the European People's Party is still the strongest group in the European Parliament, but at the same time, it now has no majority in the European Parliament either. And now everyone has to take their own advice. We agreed that we could not make a decision today. And while the liberal, uh, liberally minded Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Angela Merkel of the centre-right may disagree, there's also the socialists who won the second most seats in the European Parliament. And their uh, leader in the European Parliament is U Udo Bullmann. Take a listen to what he had to say. It was about having the most votes or the most seats. It was always about a majority for change. Who has the majority for policy change? And this is us, this is the Socialists and Democrats with Franz Timmermans. Well, we are out for a new formation to reform the European Union and for policy change according to the main challenges in the European Union. That means we need a new alliance of progressive forces. Well, we've heard how disparate the views are there, Jack. So how uh, does uh, Europe find a consensus on this? Well, this is exactly what is going to have to need to happen at the moment. I've got Tom White here with me now from Global Council to discuss this. Tom, basically what's happened is that the EU leaders have said that Donald Tusk, the EU Council President, needs to go around national capitals and to the European Parliament to build consensus behind a certain candidate. What is he going to have to try and do? Uh, well, I think the task that he's been given really reveals the underlying challenges that the EU leaders have in finding a new president. I know that all of the attention is on the perceived flaws in Manfred Weber's experience or the huge disruption that's taken place in the European Parliament with the two main parties losing their combined majority for the first time. But actually, I think what underlies the divisions last night in the council is a much more deep disruption that's taken place within the member states and within that council. We have to remember that in 2014, there were a lot of um, heads of state from Angela Merkel's party who backed her in backing Jean-Claude Juncker. Whereas this time, of course, we have a um, law and justice prime minister from Poland. We have Giuseppe Conte from Italy. We have Emmanuel Macron from France. It's a much more divided council politically who will find it much harder to unite around an individual. And it's also the case that the next Commission President faces a much more contested set of policy choices than the previous um, incumbent Jean-Claude Juncker. And you alluded to the power that the Commission has to propose legislation. And of course, their inbox this time includes uh, the trade war with uh, President Trump in the United States. It includes the fallout from what could be a rather untidy exit of the UK. It includes a desire for a stronger industrial policy towards China. Many things that are more contested than Juncker's agenda of the single market and investment. And so what, what we're going to see is an attempt to find a consensus, not just around an individual, but a bridge that can unite very different parties and a very different policy preferences. Who might that be? So we have the Spitzen candidate and the, the, the most likely at the moment are Margareta Vestager, the former Danish economy minister, Franz Timmermans, currently the first vice president of the European Commission, a socialist, Vestager being a, a liberal, and Manfred Weber. Are they the only three in contention? Well, I think the, that they are the three who tick the boxes that were set out by the European Parliament and by the Council in their formal statements. Um, they clearly all stood whether formally or informally, as, as potential candidates throughout the election. Um, and they all, in some way, have a momentum behind them, have a base of support. But I think you also can't rule out the um, 
lead Brexit negotiator Michel Barnier, um, who has comes from the EPP group and therefore has a support potentially from Angela Merkel's party machine, but is also French and has maintained good links with all of the member states, in fact, throughout the Brexit process. So I wouldn't rule out an additional person coming through such as Barnier. And Michel Barnier is indeed the bookies' favourites to take that position. There you go, Bell. There's a lot to happen. At the moment, we know that Donald Tusk has been tasked by German Chancellor Angela Merkel to try and get some consensus behind a candidate before the EU Leaders' Summit on June the 21st.